All right, let's talk about the DICOM conformance statement. The DICOM conformance statement will tell you how an application entity will communicate with other AEs on your DICOM network. DICOM conformance statements are typically 300 pages long and full of complex DICOM terms. Sometimes other departments will purchase a DICOM device without consulting you. When they ask you to connect it to PAX, that's the perfect time to say, well, can I see the DICOM conformance statement? So let's take an example. Let's say you have a bone density system that produces PDF reports and you want to attach them to the imaging studies in your PAX. So when opening the study from PAX on the workstation, the images and the reports can re be viewed together. That's a good idea. So you set it up and when the tech clicks send, there's an error saying one or more files were not stored. You check the bone density send log file and you find the error encapsulated PDF storage SOP class rejected. Uh-oh, I wonder if that SOP class is supported by this unit. Well, now I'm going to have to do some reading. I'm going to have to open both the DCS for the bone density unit and for PACS. It turns out that the bone density unit supports it as an SCU, but my PACS does not support that SOP class as a service class provider. So I have to wait until there's an upgrade that adds that feature to the PACS. And this is an example of when you need to review the DICOM conformance statement. So the great thing about the DICOM standard is that it's a widely accepted and followed standard. Consequently, all DICOM conformance statements have the same basic parts. The overview section helps you answer two basic questions. What is this modality and what can it do? It lists the SOP classes and tells you whether it supports them as a user and or a provider. So if we look, does this support C echo? Yeah, right here, I see that the verification SOP class as an SCU is supported. Well, what about as a provider? Can I send a C echo from here? Yeah, I can send or receive C echoes with this unit. Next is the data flow diagrams. This shows how the vendor imagines the data flow working. The circles on the left represent the action taken on the modality. The circles on the right represent what the vendor thinks the other application entity should do. It's a graphical representation of how it should work in your environment. It's important to remember that this is how they think it should work, not a guarantee that it will work that way. This tells you the vendor preferred configuration settings and default AE title plus port settings. It's how they want it to be configured on your network. This is the most important part of the DICOM conformance statement. This is where it will tell you the exact sequence of every DICOM communication. It takes time to review, but you want to make sure it matches up with your PAX DCS. Otherwise, you might waste a day trying to send a PDF from the bone density unit. Not that I've ever done that. Thank you for watching.